Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I am super excited about releasing a new product that I've finally gotten in after well over four months in design. Um, I've done in-house testing thoroughly and the product works exactly as designed. It's amazing. Um, before I go into how beneficial this is going to be for so many of you building a system or retrofitting a system, I want to discuss the problem that led me to create this product because, again, many of you can relate to this. Typically what ends up happening is I have potential clients and just general laymen of CNC that get in getting involved, they start doing Google searches, they end up on my YouTube channel, and they start reviewing all my videos on shielding and EMI interference, and they there's two type of potential client. There's a potential client that's already having issues because their system is not shielded properly or grounded properly, or there's the client, the potential client that may be very, very uneasy about the fact they just purchased the system and realized that their conductors in the system for all their connectors are just bare leads like this and they're not properly shielded. So they feel that their system is at risk, they've been using it, it's working, but they're just not certain if they're ever going to have a problem and they know now that best practice, everything should be shielded. And then the question comes, Vince, what do I do? Do I build a new system? I just spent all this money, that's crazy. Um, I have to you know, redo everything. I have to worry about reattaching connectors, whether they're soldered leads like this DB9 or um, Quick Connects, even though we know Quick Connects should not be used. Um, and then that question comes up, you know, how much money and time is this going to take? What do I do here? Do I contact the vendor? So on and so forth. This led me to design this product here. This is the most advanced heat shrink that's currently available on the market. This is M-Shield. Um, what makes this so advanced? It's a 12 mil heat shrink. Nothing so spectacular about that. But on the inside of this heat shrink, I want to point out, you can see this light internal layer here. And what that light internal layer is, is silver. It's a conductive layer of silver. And anybody that understands electronics knows that can, uh, if we produce a Faraday cage, which is what shielding does, around our leads, and we integrate it in the shrink itself, you then have the simplest formulation to shield virtually any cable that you have to, whether it has a connector on it, or whether it doesn't. And that's the beauty of this. How this works, it will come in a complete kit. You can see we have some 3M copper tape here. And again, it has a soldered lead on it. This is your ground for your drain. It's made out of silicone for maximum flexibility. Okay, you would just take these bare leads, strip the back off the tape, wrap it around your leads, and then just insert the proper length piece of heat shrink over it, shrink it down, and now you have shielded cable. Okay. Now, just to give you guys a heads up, there are similar products like this on the market. Okay, there's another product on the market, for those of you unaware, and for those of you are aware, you're already looking at this and saying, yeah, I know that exists, but the price is ridiculous, and I feel the same way. What you're looking at here is a product called Shrink and Shield. You can Google this, see the price, and you guys, most of you will cringe. Um, and what you see here is on the Shrink and Shield, when you flex it, you can see that this screen, which acts as the Faraday cage, it's conductive, giving you your shield, is not actually bonded to the heat shrink. So what ends up happening is sometimes you're going to find that when you actually uh, go to shrink the shrink down and actually try to bond it around your conductors, it does not actually fit tightly around the conductors. So you're not actually going to get the full effect of the shield as you should. It should be bonded to the conductors as tightly as possible. That's what you're looking for. And on top of that, it shifts inside the actual tube. Um, you can see there as I touch it, it moves all over the place. Um, it's just not really, as far as I'm concerned, well designed. I wanted something bonded to the internal structure of the heat shrink. Um, the military has actually used this type of heat shrink for years in certain applications where, again, um, you, it's not always practical to use shielded cable or double, shield, double shielded cable, excuse me, because of the flexibility purpose involved. Um, or if it has to be assembled ahead of time. Some cables come in pre-assembled like this, and do you really want to go through the hassle of removing everything and doing all that? Well, you could just apply this and be set to go. So needless to say, you see the difference. This is the internal side of M-Shield. And you can see that conductive layer right there. And you can see if I just articulate it slightly, you can see the reflection. It is bonded to the heat shrink, so it does not move. You can see how it's all set up. So when you, again, go to shrink 
the heat shrink, this stays symmetrical to the heat shrink and everything will naturally shrink down all in one piece and make proper conductivity around all of your leads. Okay, now again, I wanted to cover all the details. Solder lead is imperative. Shrink and Shield, the product I've just shown you, does not include the actual copper tape. This is in my actual belief, and this is just what I personally believe. I love copper tape because you can solder to it. You can see it right there. You can see the flux that's on there. Your conductivity is gonna give you the best ground possible. This is a 20 gauge lead, okay? Um, and again, I went with that. Typically, uh, Shrink and Shield uses a 24 gauge lead. I like a thicker lead because the thicker the lead, the less resistance you have, and that's gonna make your shielding that much more effective. I did not wanna stop there. One of the key factors of M-Shield is the fact that there are applications where you'd wanna use a double shielded effect. So let's say I wanted to increase the shielding capacity of a standard layer of this after I insert my copper tape as I described around the leads and I have everything grounded as it should be with my ground uh, drain and I insert my first layer of heat shrink, I can then go over with an additional layer of heat shrink and that should increase me to about a 50% increase in shielding, acting as a second Faraday cage. Okay, so essentially giving you about the same, about, not 100% not of the same, but about the same characteristics of double shielded cable, guys. That is how effective this is. The beauty of this, I mean, many of you are out there, I'm hoping shaking your heads because this is pretty amazing stuff in the sense that if you buy a system overseas and it comes fully assembled and all of your cables inside the system are not shielded, you can do that very easily with this. It's very effective. And again, any of the cables, and I know I'm going to get questions on this a lot, what cables are most effective for this? Um, again, spindle cables should always be double shielded. I always recommend a double shielded cable. I would not use this product, but if you're dealing with low voltage type applications, high frequency type applications, this is going to be your best friend. So anything inside the system near drives, perfect. If they're individual drives, this is going to be your best friend. Breakout board applications where, again, we're dealing with a lot of wiring going around, power supply applications, you definitely, definitely want to pay attention to that. Now, word of caution. This is a conductive layer inside of here, okay? So if you put, let's say you went to use this heat shrink as normal heat shrink, and let's say we cut this lead and soldered it together, okay, and then just installed this, you would have a short because this is totally conductive. So if you were to ever have to do that and ever have to cut a lead, what you would do is cut the lead, solder it together, insert a piece of standard heat shrink to act as insulation, and then apply the shielded heat shrink over it. Because what the shielded heat shrink really is, is just applying a shielded layer to whatever conductors you want to go with that are, whether they're assembled or if you're building your own cables. Again, super amazing stuff, works extremely well. And like I said, with a three to one shrink ratio, this stuff is really amazing in the fact, you know, you're going all the way down to four mils. So virtually all cables, uh, that I can think of in CNC. I mean, if you're using 16 gauge, even on these, on these little DB9s, you're using right here is 20 gauge leads. Um, you're still fine using this, and you're going to be just as fine as soon as you actually wrap it with the uh, copper tape. It's going to increase the diameter slightly of the leads, and that'll bond even tighter to the actual shield once it's shrunk. So again, you guys get the feel for just how easy this is, and I hope it will solve many of your issues because, again, this stuff, don't get me wrong, I've lowered the price dramatically. Um, if you look up, again, Shrink and Shield, you guys will look at the regular price of that stuff. I might even put a link just to show you the price of what its standard goes for, um, but it's in excess. I think it's for a foot on Amazon. I think it's 40 or $50. It's, it's ridiculous. Actually, I'm wrong. 12, uh, half inch, I believe, is $60 for a foot okay um, I'm definitely gonna be much less than that I'm trying to figure out my pricing now this just came in this week but I just could not wait to show you exactly how this works once again um, the copper tape will be included with the kit um, depending upon how many feet you purchase I will sell this by the foot I could sell it by the inch you just have to disclose to me exactly how much you want to purchase don't over purchase this 
um, use it sparingly use it for the general applications that it's designed for and general applications means for your CNC system it's anything carrying a signal that you do not do not want to have interrupted low voltage signals are going to be your best friend used with this plasma guys I cannot emphasize this enough this stuff used with a plasma system is golden if you're building your own system you can do it so easy it's frightening maybe by two or three feet you're set okay if you think in terms of being able to build it put all your conduct your uh, connectors on and install them I mean it's going to save you a tremendous amount of time plus the flexibility ratio okay a lot of guys think working with double shielded cable like I said the military and uh, actually just not them not just them um, lots of companies that deal with appliances electronics it doesn't matter who it is there are times shielded cable and double shielded cable is not best for the application because you need maximum flexibility and you want something that's easy to work on this makes it super super easy I mean it does not get any easier the price is reflected by making your life easy but if you weigh everything and I tell tell my clients and potential clients all the time weigh what you're paying for how much is this worth to solve a problem that typically would require a system rebuild or require you buying all double shielded cable or single shielded cable and redoing everything and the time investment if you factor that in then you understand how powerful this is now when this ships just to cover all the details this has to be shipped in a tube it cannot be bent like regular heat shrink it is very sensitive okay this is a very very like I said this is not standard heat shrink it's very advanced um, and that being said it will be shipped in a tube it will be packed properly professionally as possible and again to give you the best product that you can get to make sure your machines are as stable as possible because nothing beats any machine if it's not stable okay so we need to make sure that machine is as stable as possible to make you as much money as possible and again this component right here for many different applications I can't tell you how many clients tell me they've purchased a cable and you know oh man I've got this cable but it's an older system it's not shielded they don't make it anymore here's your best friend okay as long as that cable fits in here if you had to actually solder it or if there's a way you can slide the end connector in you're golden if not you can always cut the cable like I said splice it together using solder once that's done apply standard heat shrink for insulation and then go over it with this to shield it and you're set okay if you if you absolutely must do that this is where this really pays for itself and believe me a lot of one-off cables exist so again guys I hope this video has been helpful um, and I look forward to any questions you have I know many questions are going to be asked about this because it is such a unique product but um, again I know it's going to help many of you and it's very very simple as far as I always get asked about ground leads how do I install a ground I mean this is as easy as it gets wrap the actual leads around with the actual copper tape and you're grounded there's your ground lead and then all you got to do is just insert the heat shrink shrink it down you're set to go so again guys uh, have a great weekend um, to all my subscribers thank you so much um, I've got some more videos to follow very shortly I've got some things I'm working on um, I really 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 want to discuss some other topics that are coming up uh, in the near future I've got some designs that are going to be really really big I think many of you are going to be excited um, if you guys have any questions have any questions about quotes have any questions about systems message me at storm 2313 at gmail.com that's of course my direct email you could also message me at my e-dealer direct store I'll put that link in the description as well um, I'm also gonna put the link of shrink and shield you guys can check out the price of that and then check this out and see exactly what I'm talking about you do your own price comparison um, but on top of everything else and I want to just state this at the end of the video is that um, if you guys request any type of support from me I typically do not charge for that if you're asking me however to engineer a machine for you I am going to charge for that okay and the reason I do is because my time like yours is valuable okay I've had some really interesting emails I had an email from a guy who claiming to be a PhD who emailed me and he was supposed to be of electronics background and yet he was asking me to design a system when I told him the price around the system of course I never heard from him again we have to execute common sense okay if I if you're a mechanic and I ask you about building my car I would expect to pay you or compensate you if I I mean that's just logic to me but a lot of people feel that that's just acceptable 
Um, if you tell me you're going to purchase equipment from me and think by telling me you're going to purchase equipment from me and then stating, oh, well, I want you to you know, basically go over engineering my system or telling me what I need, then my feeling is this. You would pay for the consulting up front, and what I do is I prorate it. So when you go to purchase your components, I will reduce it by half of whatever you paid for the consulting so that it's fair. It has to be fair on both accounts because, again, sometimes I, I will have a client that will come in and, or a potential client, excuse me, that comes in and wants to purchase and they follow through. And then I have other potential clients that will come in and once they hear the prices, they're like, you know, I, I'd rather just do it myself or whatever. And that's fine, too. However, if I'm designing systems, I've done this for large companies as well and I've gotten burned by them as well. It, every bit of time has to be compensated for. I mean, it has to be fair. If you have questions, I don't mind general questions. If you're asking me to design a system, be realistic, okay? Because there's time involved. If you're asking me about transmission pieces and sourcing components, there's a time investment there. So just think of your own time and treat me the way you would expect to be treated yourself. If we do that, I feel we all can't go wrong. So again, I thank you guys for listening. Take care.